Hi friends. So I'll be talking as a continuum of the statistics uh, I've done on how to read forest plot. So I'll be just talking on this uh, NNT. This was also asked as a question in DNB. So it is important to have some understanding. I'm sure when this is asked and we do not know conceptually what NNT is, you may write it's the number of patients that we need to treat to get an outcome. Beyond that, we may fail to extrapolate as to how we apply this, how we derive at this number. And uh, NNT is very important because there are other statistical variables that you read in the manuscript that are derived from NNT, like relative risk ratio or relative risk, odds ratio. All these are derived from this NNT as well. So it is important to understand this. So, I wish to acknowledge my colleague, uh, Dr. Pradeep, who uh, helped me develop this content. So, when when a question, especially of statistics, is asked, like forest plot, I said, you need to write a diagram and show. But when such a question like NNT is asked, you can only write about this by citing an example. You cannot extrapolate and write about this without an example. So, during this narrative, you would see that I would be citing examples at every sort of an instance to have a clarity. Otherwise, you cannot write uh, an answer for this question. It is, the answer has to be substantiated with example. So the, that, is, that is the gist of it. So for all the trainings, just keep these examples in mind or create your own examples. So the definition of NNT is the ex expected number of patients that need to have this intervention to have one patient with an expected outcome. So I know this sounds again number of patients that you need to treat to get the one sort of a desired outcome. So that is a definition. So that, that definition is embedded within that acronym of NNT. But then you have to show an example. For example, if I say NNT is 5, then obviously our understanding is we need to treat 5 patients to prevent one bad outcome. So whatever desired outcome you're looking at, that you have to extrapolate. So you... So when I say NNT is five, so you have to treat five patients to prevent one bad outcome. So it's a comparative measure of effect. And uh, there are different NNT. So number needed to treat is not same for eight context. So for every context, the number of number needed to treat keeps changing uh, for different risk groups. So you have to define what is the risk population that you're looking at and NNT keeps varying. So, simplistically, NNT is the number of patients that you need to treat to prevent one bad outcome. So, in some high, if there is a very high NNT, suppose if you have an, a number needed to treat is 50, then it means that interventions is very similar to comparator because then there is no difference uh, because you are getting very good sort of a uh, sort of a result with regards to your intervention. So, if higher, always remember if there is a very high NNT, then interventions is similar to the comparator and there is no major difference. So, as I said, it, the whole explanation of this concept comes only with examples. So, suppose we'll take a study. So, you take a randomized controlled trial where you are comparing one medication, which you call it as a super medication versus placebo. So, you say there are 100 patients in the treatment group with the super medication and there's 100 in the placebo group. And we get the result. So the result at the end of one year in the super medication is 75% are alive by using this drug, whatever drug that is. In placebo, at the end of one year, only 25% are alive. So what is the difference? So the difference is 75 minus 25. So 50% are benefited. Isn't it? So that we call it as, so which means the use of this medication has helped additional 50%. So for which, which we say, then you have to treat two patients to prevent one death. So that's what it is. So your number needed to treat in this will become two because you have uh, additional 50% help is derived. So uh, you will see in the subsequent example. So, so the difference 75 minus 25 is your absolute risk reduction that you have attained by using this medications. So your NNT becomes two in this. So if you look at this graph, so either you use super med or placebo, 25% survive regardless, isn't it? Because uh, either way in placebo also 25% were alive. So 25% survive regardless of whether you have used super med. But the use of these interventions has helped 50%. So this 50%, this gray graph, these are the group of patients which are benefited by the super med. And super med is not given 100% survival because 25% die regardless. 
either use supermed or so this is how we break up the statistics just to get you to understand that your supermed has held this 50 percent and number needed to treat becomes two so number needed to treat is simply one divided by absolute reduction absolute risk reduction so so that is that is the formula that you need to derive so again we'll explain this through the study so very simplistically you see uh, there is one group where aspirin is used and there is one group where anticoagulation is used and you have a stroke of 5.9% in aspirin anticoagulation it is less stroke so there is a, some advantage how do you that is absolute risk reduction you just subtract 5.9 minus 2.6 how much it is 5.9 minus 2.6 is 3.3 that is absolute risk reduction so you are in it is very simple 1 divided by 3.3 percent which is 1 divided by 100 divided by 3.3 1 divided by 3.3 percent which is 100 divided by 3.3 which is equal to 30 number needed to treat is 30 very simple so first you have to calculate absolute risk reduction between the intervention group and the treatment group whichever groups you are comparing and and you divide that by one as a percentage you get number needed to treat so if this question is asked, you have to only explain with these examples. Otherwise, you cannot write this answer as to how we derive it. So I request all the audience to pay little attention to this slide. This is terribly important. So now we have spoken about, very simple, right? The previous slide, we, we spoke about 50% benefit. So the number needed to treat is two, very simple. But if you have different numbers, you just subtract the difference that is existing, which is absolute risk reduction, one divided by whatever percentage you get, you get a number needed to treat. But this is the, the, then the question arises, how do we derive relative risk? How do we derive odds ratio? How do we derive relative risk ratio? So pay attention to this slide, it's very important. So you have two groups, experimental group, I just label as E, experimental group and control group. So E is the events that have happened in experimental group. E and E is, the patients which did not have events, okay? So the total number of patients in experimental group is 150. And the total number of patients in the control group is 250. So this is just an example which we are trying to deduce how we derive with the other numbers. You got this, no? You understood this, that the total number is 150. Amongst 150 patients, 15 patients had some event, whatever event that is. It may be MI, stroke or whatever. So here the total number is 250 and the events they've had in the control group is 100. Okay. So now you have to calculate what is the event rate. Okay. So the experimental event rate, which means in experimental group where you have used experimental event rate is 15 into 100 divided by 150. That comes to 10%. And control event rate is where you have 100, 100 into 100 divided by 250, it comes to 40%. This is the rate. This is the, this is how we calculate what is the event rate in the experimental group, event rate in the control group. Isn't it? I'm sure you have read all this in your MBBS, you all forgotten. So try to go through this very, very easy calculation. Okay, it's 15 into 100 divided by 150, it gives you 10%. And 100 into 100 divided by 250 gives you 40%. That is control event rate. So you've got this rate. Absolute risk reduction is we know the events that have happened in experimental group and events that have happened in control, you have to subtract. I told you in the last slide, that comes to 30%. Very simple, no? The so absolute risk reduction is you, you have to subtract the events that have happened and in the control group, that is 30%. NNT is very simple. One divided by absolute risk reduction, which is one divided by 30, which is 3.33. Very clear now? Simple. So NNT is 3.3. Now the question comes, how do we calculate relative risk? Relative risk is experimental event rate that has happened divided by control event rate. Experimental event rate is 10 divided by control event rate is 40, which is 0.25. That is relative risk. And relative risk reduction, the simplistic way I would expect you to remember is just 1 minus relative risk. That is point center. That's the easier way to remember. One minus relative risk is relative risk reduction. And how do we calculate odds ratio? Odds ratio is experimental event. This is 15. And in the group which, where there is no event, which is 135, 15 divided by 135, 
and the whole thing you have to divide by control of the events. Control events is 100 divided by the population we did not have event, which is Cn. So if you do this, you'll get 0. 0.167. So this is how the formula, so all the papers you read, you would see there would be mention of absolute risk reduction, there would be mention of NNT, there would be always mention of relative risk, which is only divide, dividing the event rate divided by control event rate, experimental event rate divided by control event rate. If you divide 10 divided by 40, you'll get 0.25. So very simple. So that's all it is. So you so somehow have to, when these questions are asked, you have to somehow extrapolate by citing an example, by using an example, so you will get a clarity as to how relative risk is derived, how odds ratio is derived, how relative risk reduction is derived. So that's about, so that's all you have to write. If a question on NNT is asked, that's all you it's the content with examples only you have to explain. So NNT can mislead and does it give you all the sort of information? So most important, just because you say, okay, I have to treat 10 patients to save one life, you don't take it at the face value, but we need to know the context because NNT gives the number of patients that would be benefited, but it would not tell you how much they get benefited. And one needs to know the details as to what has determined the success of the treatment. And one has to ascertain that whether the complete cure, all these remain one. That's why you have to read the whole manuscript. You cannot say, oh, this study showed that you, if you treat five patients, you can save one life. You cannot take it at the face value. Because you need to read the whole manuscript to understand what sort of interventions were needed, whether the, the cure or the outcome that was achieved was complete cure and whether it was meaningful. And suppose it may say 30% important, whether it was clinically significant. It may not be any, uh, having any clinical relevance to us. And percentage, whether there is a qualitative improvement with regards to any of the quality, that is also not meant, that would not, you wouldn't know by NNT. And one also needs to determine whether this was uh, the comparison was with the placebo or with another treatment. Because I showed you one example where we compared two interventions, aspirin and anticoagulation. So you may have very many instances where you are comparing two drugs. And there are instances where you compare one drug with a placebo. So all these details and context setting has to be done to understand the value of NNT. And one also needs to know for how long the follow-up of the patients have done to determine the significance of NNT, whether it was in an acute sort of a situation, subacute situation or chronic situation. All this makes a difference whether NNT is something that we can subscribe to in influencing our treatment armamentarium. So now the question is, what is a good NNT? The perfect NNT is one, which means the number of patients you treat, all of them have had that desired outcome is what you would want, but that, that seldom happens. So one needs to find out whether there was a robustness of this with regards to treatment outcome and what are the costs of the interventions that you have used to achieve the desired outcome. Because if the costs are prohibitive, then obviously we cannot say, okay, I, you have an NNT of two that every two patients I use, one patient can be saved because we have to factor in the costs involved and what, even the risk of the treatment. Because recently, if you recall, we had discussed about microaxial flow uh, for coronary syndrome. And the cost of the intervention is 18 lakhs for that intervention. So can we, are we justified in using that? If I say NNT is 5 for microaxial flow, which means for every 5 patients I put 18 lakhs, one I'm going to save. Is that substantiated? So these are the questions that one needs to ask. And one has to look whether there are simpler alternatives. Like I may say, uh, rather than microaxial, I may use balloon pump. So these are some of the questions that one needs to entertain before taking NNT on the face value. I'll just show you a simple example. This came from the study, Pichero et al., uh, by the U.S. group, where they did a study on the use of IV antibiotics for sinusitis, and they said number needed to treat was nine, which means for every nine patients you treat, you have one favorable outcome. But although this was a positive study, so this was, this was done in a pediatric, and this was not incorporated into sort of a guidelines, pediatric guidelines, for the simple fact, because the risk of antibiotic resistance by adopting this strategy outweighed the benefit. So this is one example which uh, has been cited in literature as to how NNT cannot be taken on the face value. So one needs to be aware of the caveats that uh, are, you know that sort of influences the interpretation of NNT. So that's all it's about NNT. So it's a very important tool. So one divided by absolute risk reduction, very simple to calculate. 
once you got that you can derive other things like relative risk and then odds ratio and relative risk reduction all these are derived after you have clearly understood what you are uh, number needed to treat and absolute risk reductions are established so that's about it friends so thank you and all so i invite all my esteemed friends and listeners to attend our signature conference global intensive care symposium which is happening in bangalore from 17 to 18th october so request all of our listeners to submit your valuable work to journal of acute care which comes out every three months and i've disseminated the seventh issue to all our friends and visit my website to rehear to this lecture so thank you thank you one and all